after that. You let our youth go and enjoy yourself. All right, how's everyone tonight? Fine. Are right, you sound puny tonight? How are yeah. you tonight? Fine. All, right. All right, that's better. That's better. You know, it seems like it's been a long time since yes. we've been able to just sit and be in our Bible class on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, masquerading as Wednesday night. <laughs> Here tonight. So thank you all for coming on out, and uh, it's always my pleasure to be with you, and I like to always get my little computer concordance going real quick, too, just in case, because y'all like to challenge a brother in class. Mm -hmm. So I got to make sure I got, I'm on my P's and Q's, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and, and it's not going to be by memory, I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> if the computer can cooperate with me. Let's see, what is this thing doing? I know that's a password. Oh, well, it ain't going to work, so I ain't going to worry about it. I'm going to mess around with that right now. Let's make sure this camera's in the right angle. Yeah. It's good. Okay. All right. So we're going to continue on uh, with Exodus as we like to go uh, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we don't get everything uh, that we need to heal from God's Word. So as always, I always welcome you to Share your questions, your comments, and your suggestions as we go along. But can I make one admission to you? Yes. The preacher don't know everything. No. <laughs> Amen. So I want to let you know right now. And so if I had to say, hey, I'll get back to you on that, I will do that, you know, with you as well. So complete honesty. So tonight we're going to uh, continue at this. is part four in our series as we continue to go through uh, the whole book. And our topic tonight is Moses Flees to Midian. Moses flees to Midian. So we did everything up until this point, right? Remember the children of Israel are oppressed, you know, under the harsh hand of Pharaoh, Egyptian slavery, right? And even to the point where the young men were supposed to be killed, right? But God blessed through his providence for Moses to survive, didn't he? Right? right? The mother put him in his, the, the King James verse says the ark, right? His ark. And she put him on off the shore in the reeds and it went down to where? Where Pharaoh started. Israel. Right. So at this point, what would Moses be called? What would he be called? He's a prince. He's a prince. So he's technically royalty. Because the princess raised him as her own. And so when you think about this, uh, he wasn't born with a silver spoon in his mouth. But he got one later. He did. He ended up one, one later being adopted child of the princess that makes Pharaoh his grandfather. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I say this to put this in perspective with you. So that means that Pharaoh, I mean, excuse me, uh, Moses had to be a very strong-willed person. Because you know later on in the story, he's going to step away from privilege. He's going to step away from royalty. He's going to really, if you think about it, betray his own family lineage. I'm talking about his adoptive family lineage in order to be the deliverer of the children of Israel. Well, who can say that was God's intention for him to depart from what, what, he, what he got now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, obviously you see that at the Alberta uh, Bridge. We're actually, hold that for me. That's a, that's a good saying. I know it. I'm going to lift it ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's exactly where I'm going to go with that, actually, in a way. All right. So I'm just trying to get us back up. This has been a few weeks. And this is where we're at at this point then, okay? So everybody remember where we're at? 
And remember, this is, we didn't go through the sanitized version, right? This would have been a very bloody situation, right? Because kids would have been getting killed, right? right? And then the edict, that means the, the law, it was legal for anybody to kill one of the Hebrew boys, right? Yeah. Other Hebrews could kill them. And what? The Egyptians could kill them, and anybody else that was a tribe you know, could kill them, and there would have been no consequences for it, because why? It was the law of the land. the land. We made that as comparison to what we have today. If that was today, these people that would have killed the Hebrew boys, they would have been called good patriots mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. of Egypt. <laughs> Sound real familiar, don't it? <laughs> yeah. But that is exactly the environment. You know, just because you're a good patriot don't mean you're a good person. Right. Because leadership can lead you wrong and away from God, right? Mm -hmm. Again, right. we always go by Acts 5 29 when what? The laws of the land conflict with what God wants. What did Peter say? I'd rather obey God than man. than man. And you see, that's what Moses' mother did, right? Because she was against the law in hiding her child. She was not supposed to do that. And she hid him as long as she could, right? And then, of course, she put it in God's providence hand. And then what? God took it from there. Mm -hmm. And that's how he ended, ended up in the what? The princess's possession. But then again, God's providence was what? She was still mother. Because she still got to nurse the child, right? Mm -hmm. right? All those good things. So God was still in the plan. Some way, somehow, these things could not be coincidence. God had already seen the future. And he was making sure the things in the present lined up with the future he wanted, which was what? Moses being the leader of the children of Israel to take down Egypt. Because what was God's point? What did he want to show Egypt and everybody? What was God trying to do in this whole narrative of the book of Exodus? Stay Stay God. Show that he is God. That was the whole point. Because remember, you're going to see later on in history that God raised up Egypt. Egypt would not have been mighty. Egypt would not have been a military power. Egypt would not have been economically where they're at if God didn't raise them up over the centuries to be who they were. And so then now God will show them, look, I am the one. That's God. Because remember again, we're going to come to it. We haven't got to it yet. But every plague that he put on them represented a Egyptian God, false God, mm -hmm. that he was showing, look, such and such God is not God, because look what I just did. That was what that was about. Okay? So again, we're studying this under a what? An adult lens. So we're not just going to stay on the surface here. We're not going to stay sanitized. Because again, this was a bloody, horrible scene for the children of Israel. Now you see why it, the Bible says they were what, crying out to God. Because yeah. yeah. oppression was more than just work. They were being murdered. You know, from a child standpoint, so forth and so on. So this was some, was some crazy stuff that was going on. Okay? This would have been like, like we used uh, uh, analogy of people that through history, this has been Hitler type stuff. That was happening to them. Okay? Idiot mean stuff that was happening in Uganda. This is some, some, nasty, some nasty stuff that was going on. Alright, so now we're at Exodus chapter 2. So we did our review. Any questions or comments before we, we continue? So now we're, I think we're caught up to where we need to be. Okay. Alright, if not, help us out. Somebody read Exodus 2, verse 11, verse number 12. Let's keep going. <laughs> and it came to pass in those days that Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brethren. And look on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. Mm -hmm. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. All right, and it came to pass in those days, Moses was grown, so we worked ahead of time, right? Mm -hmm. No longer we're talking about baby Moses, the one that's in the arms of. Uh, the princess, so forth and so on, right? Now he is a man. Mm -hmm. And so now he's seeing the man stuff going on. So now he's seeing man thoughts, okay? Mm -hmm. What is going on with my people? So for some reason, uh, he didn't have an identity problem. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times when you're raised by somebody that's not of your race or not of your economic class, it's like, you know, sometimes you have identity problems. Mm -hmm. I don't know how. I don't know if they were... Uh, 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 Reminding him every day in Egypt that you're not one of us, or his mother and him kept saying, "Look, you know you're a Hebrew. You know who knows, but we know one thing: 
He knew who he was. Amen. And he never let, lost his identity. Nor did he lose his love for his own people. Because that can happen now. You give some folk enough money, enough power, they will forget everything about where they came from. Yeah. Amen. Just forget politics. Yeah, I want to say some names, but I don't say it. Anyway. Supreme. You see it? You see it? Don't fucking say that. No, anyway. He gave me a hint. It's on the Supreme Court, yeah. It's also in those that want to be by the PP, but okay. Hint, hint. All right. You will see that. That they forget everything about themselves, care nothing about their family, don't realize that behind the scenes, that's another Hebrew. They don't really care about him. <laughs> but you know what I really want to say. But anyway. All right, so now we say, it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, and he went out unto his brethren and looked on their birds. So what is he watching? What's, what is he, what, what do you think is he watching? Yeah. watching the burden, the burden, the burden. Work. The slavery. Correct. He's watching them be enslaved. Mm -hmm. And it's bothering him at this point, right? Mm -hmm. It's bothering him. Yeah. All right? Now, you will establish from Scripture, this will be important to you later on, they, he's about 40 years old when he's at the burning bush. Okay? And when he goes into Egypt, he's 80. So he was an old man by the time he was called to come back, to, come yeah. back to Egypt. Okay? You'll see that as we establish this in the scripture. Moses was an old man. And we're not talking about Genesis old. Because you know Genesis old would be 600, 800 years old. No, 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 no. Aaron and people like this only lived to about 120. So by the time he's called to that, he's what three quarters of the way dead. So he was not a young man by any form of fact. He was young here, basically about a middle aged man. And so you, you'll see stuff like that. Okay, all right. You see that as you go along, right? I don't know the exact age right here, but I know when, by the time he got to the burning bush, he's about forty. He's about forty. All right, now. So let's keep looking at it. So now he looked on the birds and he spied the Egyptian smiting Hebrew, which means hitting him or something, right? Mm -hmm. One of his brethren. And he thought he'd get away with something. And what did it say? He looked his way. Yeah. Looked that way, the coast is clear. I'm going to take care of business. He will not hit none of my people. <laughs> Any others. So, I, of course, we know then that Moses was not of Mahatma Gandhi later on. He was not like Martin Luther King. This was not about what? Non-violent mm -hmm. resistance. This was like, I'm going to stop you, I'm going to stop you now with my own hands. Mm -hmm. And so he believed a little bit of violence here. Okay? You know, if you think about that, you look at Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela, M Mandela was considered a non-violent person, but not at first. Nelson Mandela would blow up your house. A lot of people don't know that about him. That kind of thing before he changed his philosophy. And so he was a lot like Moses here. Pretty much like Malcolm X, by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. And then he changed. Then God put a different spirit in him. I'm not going to allow you to do it that way. Because why? He didn't want Moses getting the credit. What was the point of Jeep, uh, God doing this? So that he could show that he was God. So he had to take a different method than smiting, as the King James Version would, would say, the Egyptians. Okay? God is going to change his methodology, but his methodology right now is not non-violent resistance. resistance. It is violent resistance. Okay? All right, so now the rebel, <laughs> the radical Moses, has done what to this Egyptian that was oppressing his brother? He killed him. He murdered him. Mm -hmm. He murdered him, okay? Right? He thought he was getting away with it. Mm -hmm. He said, and he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Somebody had to be there, though. Because somebody found out. He didn't see somebody. But somebody saw him. Right, right. What about the man that was? The one that he was fighting with. Oh, the one that got hit? He could have told him. Wasn't nobody else there. If he looked one way and another way, he didn't see that. He didn't see. He didn't say nobody was there. Right, he didn't say nobody was there. He said he didn't see no man. Right, but it could have been. No, I'm not ruling that out. It could no, be that man telling. Because if you think about it, he could have went back and said, hey, this, uh, we got a hero. <laughs> and as you go on down into the lesson, they're going to bring out the fact 
that somebody saw it because they brought it to his attention. Yep. What he had done. And exactly. that's why. The Bible don't reveal who told on him. So go ahead. But somebody sees you. Know, some, <laughs> sometimes you, you don't see everybody to see you. Right. right. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's where I was going with the two. You know, I mean, you can think about it as like the eyes of God. Even though nobody else see it, somebody still see you. God, yeah, whatever you do, right? Okay. And he can still hold it against you. All right? Yeah. So yeah, so we don't know. We don't know exactly how the word got out, but we know it got out there. Yeah. Yeah. Some kind of way, right? So again, his method was wrong. God wasn't looking for him to do it in this method, right? He wanted God wanted to deliver the children of Israel through nonviolent means. Mm -hmm. Okay? It really was through what? Supernatural means. Yes. That he really wanted to do it, right? All right, so if, if Moses would have succeeded in like a rebellion type leadership, then what? He would have been the leader, mm -hmm. and the people would have rallied behind him instead of God, God right? Remember, throughout this whole journey, remember when we studied from numbers as well, God always wanted the credit for what he was doing. Remember, that's why he wanted him to speak to the rock mm -hmm. at that last time, right? But what did Moses do? He struck it. He struck it. So now the people can go back and say, oh, look what Moses did for us. Mm -hmm. But when you speak to it, that means something supernatural had to happen. Wow. That the power really was from what? God. God. And this is what he's been trying to show them all alone from the very beginning. Okay? All right. So God will deliver people himself later in Bible history proving that he is God. Mm -hmm. That's the point is. Okay? And you got to remember that as we continue to study. Any questions or comments on that? Feel free. Feel free. All right, let's keep going. Here. Somebody read 13 and 14. Here's what he's talking about, Brother Lars talking about. 13 and 14. And when he went out the second day, behold, two Hebrew men were fighting. And he said to one who did the wrong, Why are you striking your companion? Then he said, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptians? But Moses feared and said, Surely. This thing is known. So Moses had that much common sense. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's known. All right, let's look at this four man. I want you to look at it deep. And, and when he went out the second day, that means the news traveled very, very quickly. Quicker than the internet. Because he got out just the next day. Right? It didn't take a week. None of that, right? The next day, the whole, what, two men of the Hebrews strolled together, you know, fighting, right? Right. And he said to him that did the wrong, wherefore smite his like brother. What was he trying to do? What was, what was Moses trying to do? Trying to stop them from fighting, breaking them. That's who they were. Okay. The first thing he did, he let them know that you shouldn't be doing it. Y'all were Yeah. What's the point of that? Why did he do that? That's right. Why would he do that? Just well, it's in a Christian sense, but you should love one another is what he was showing them instead of fighting each other. That's the basic first point in there. Right. Leading to what outcome? What was the outcome he was trying to get? Unity. Uh, Unity. Not it. Mm -hmm. Unity. Right. They should have been together. Because think about Moses' mind. Moses already thinks he's the liver. Mm -hmm. He ain't been sent yet. But he thinks already, I'm going to deliver them. How is this going to happen if we fight each other? Mm -hmm. you, see, you see the point? I see where you're going because brethren wouldn't be in there if he Correct. was. I see where you're going with it. One God, word God yes. is speaking this year. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, I'm going to cut you off. No, 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 I'm going to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> one, one word tells you his object of this. Yeah. So Moses already, even without anybody, he's thinking nobody's sin, he's already trying to liberate his people. Huh? But is it time yet? No. No. Because God hadn't called him to that at this point, even though it was already on in his heart. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So, and when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. He said to him that did the wrong, What are four smites thou thy fellow? Why are you hitting your, your, your brother? That's what he word. And he said, Who made the oppressive judge over us? <laughs> well, he's going to find out it's going to be God later. A prince means what? Who made you my ruler? And who made you a judge? In other words, how are you going to tell us what to what do? Is wrong and right. Yeah. Right. How are you going to decide that what we're doing is wrong? Okay? 
Later on, they're going to find out it was Moses. After Moses was what? Sent to do that because he did become a ruler and judge. Actually became the ruler and judge over them. Uh -huh. God put him in charge later. Yes, ma'am. It uh, seems to me now those the, the, the Hebrews that was fighting, perhaps they, you know, they might have envied him because he was the son of Pharaoh's daughter, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and that's the reason. That could have been the reason why they spoke to him like he did. Mm -hmm. You've been privileged all these all these years that you don't know the you know. Right, the mm -hmm. yeah. you, you can easily see somebody doing that. If it was our day and age, mm -hmm. yeah. somebody would be like, "You're not really one of us anyway." Yeah, not one of us. Right. <laughs> so how are you going to come down here telling me yeah. what I can and cannot do when you have not been with us in the first place? That could be. Yeah. That could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really. It's a possibility. I thought I started with my hand. Yeah. All right. Like, like my brother said, we're building up to something. <laughs> yeah. It's on purpose. I'm just picking with you. I'm just picking with you. All right. So obviously the Moses murder Egyptian was known. We established that. That we know is rock solid. Mm -hmm. At this point, there's no speculation. There's nothing in regards to that. We know that the news has gotten out, right? Because the man who tried to correct, point out the fact. Now, Moses meant to unify. And we talked about the two that were at odds, right? Mm -hmm. And again, that's part of what we're supposed to do too, right? Matthew 5, verse number 9, we're supposed to be what? The peacemakers. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the what? The children mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Right? We're not trying to trying to wreck homes, we're trying to keep homes together, right? Mm -hmm. Relationships together, because that is the sign that we are what? The children of God. So if you have a congregation in turmoil all the time, how can the world see that you belong to God? They can't. They can't. Because what? That's the sign. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. It didn't mean you won't have any problems. It didn't mean that you won't have any disagreements. But the whole end of the thing is what? Come back to yeah. peace, yeah. no matter what. In church, folks, you don't have to agree on everything but Scripture. There are some things we can be in disagreement on and still be in Christian union. We can. I mean, I can use the simple stuff. Some like the curtain, some don't. What does that have to do with salvation? You can stay in disagreement on something like that, right? But if somebody come in here and say, Jesus ain't the son of God, that's a different thing. Right, right. So we have some liberty to disagree on some things, right? Just as long as what? We have what? Peace in the process, right? So I hope you understand that. 
Help me understand that. You, it could be between congregations. You know, we take the Lord's Supper after. Some take it at the beginning of the sermon, whatever the case may be. That don't make them unscriptural. That don't make us unscriptural. We can disagree on it because God said what? Take it the first day of the week. He didn't tell us what time. He didn't tell us in what order. Anything like that. But some people will do that. Just because they've always done it that way. Oh, they teach us something new down there. No, they're not. No, they're not. They teach the exact same thing. But we have what? The, the, the ability to disagree on that as long as we stay in the same scriptural direction. That makes sense to you? Yeah. I just want to bring that out because we'll go that way sometimes. Uh, that reminds me of uh, the brother down at 22nd and Moore. You know, he spoke on that about how the way we think mm -hmm. and see. And, you know, um, when you think about, like, you use the uh, thing for an example. See, some people may think just because they always been blue, they shouldn't be another color. Right. But it's the thought of the process thought. But they, it doesn't really matter right. of how that is. You know, but sometimes it's, we all think guilty about thought process. Right. And it's your thought process that you just have to think about, okay, well, you know, that's going to make no difference. Yeah. But we make it an issue when it really isn't an issue. Mm -hmm. Like a mountain out of Yeah, right. I was just going to say. say. Yeah, mm -hmm. the brand used to do that word all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And see, the other thing is, any thought we have, we got to make sure we filter to what the scripture says. Why? Make sure it's spiritual. Make sure that it stands up to what God yeah. actually says yeah. instead of what we just think. Yeah. You, get, you have a lot of problems with that. And a lot of problems mm -hmm. with that happens between older generations and younger generations of church. Mm -hmm. There's some things that the older generation gets stuck on. That ain't necessarily scripture. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, that the young folk want to do that ain't the scripture either. Exactly. And so you start having problems. See, that's when your strong leadership comes in. Yeah. That's when you have men that are that are elders that can step in and really bridge that gap. Bridge that gap. Some folks split churches over that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, but because why? Everybody in there, I've been, can I kind of really share stuff with you? Especially before, you know, Henry Street, I've always been in meetings where I had to stop the meeting and say, hey, what mistake are we making here? Because everybody's still talking about, I think, I believe, we should do this, we should do that. And I stopped the meeting in a minute. And I was like, okay, what mistake did we make? Nobody asked the question, what does the Bible say on this topic? When that says, when the Bible speaks, then we all need to be quiet. At that point. I've I seen that a whole lot. Yeah. A whole lot. You know, and that's when, when churches get in trouble. When they start doing traditions and, you know, it's always been that way and stuff like that. No. Go and check it. Go and check it and see if it's true or not. Okay. That makes sense to you? Yeah. Yes. Otherwise, you can't stand here. Right? Because anybody's opinion can divide. Yeah. But God's word unifies. Mm -hmm. right? All right. So Moses again meant to unify the two word acts. Again, we're supposed to be peacemakers. That's Matthew 5, verse number 9. Sometimes when it comes to opinion stuff that's not salvational, to keep the peace, you gotta give up yours. Mm -hmm. You gotta you know, you gotta compromise. Just let it go. Mm -hmm. If it has nothing to do with salvation, let it go. Let them have blue curtains, even though you want red. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> but some people will be that way. They will be that way. That, that pain about certain things. Alright. Somebody get 15 to 22. We'll probably get here. Anybody. Or you can switch off, whatever the case may be. Now, 
and we kind of touched on this a little bit. Sometimes your position and your camaraderie folks don't matter. Right. Even though you think they love you, they really don't. Because most, most is royalty. But still, Pharaoh was going to do that. But he was still going to kill him. him. You know what? This, this, <laughs> this, this God's version of what happened here. That's a totally different than what they portrayed in the movie. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and my head is running right back because I spent a lot of money taking my family to see. Well, I was following <laughs> to see that movie. They stood Moses up to strip him just like he was nothing. Mm. And I mean, they had laws that they called out when they stripped him before they sent him off. But none of this is mentioned. It's not and I said to myself, well, how did they come up with that? <laughs> Liberty. Liberty. Hey, you ever read you ever read the credits when a story comes on? It says based on based on a true story. Okay, okay. So they're gonna say I'm taking some liberties and not going to follow the Bible. Watch that five quick. But did that come to your mind when you when you when you started studying it? Yeah. Not that Somewhere, part. Um, not, not that part. part. But, but but a lot of the Yule Brenner and all that kind of stuff right. does come to mind. Okay. Yeah, you yeah, when I see it. Um, and I can see how fake that stuff is. <laughs> because a lot of people believe it differently. They believe more about what the TV is saying than what God is yeah, saying. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And it's awful they do. <clears throat> that means they don't they not take the time to study for themselves. Right. Okay. At all. At all. That's how that's how people get duped all the time in churches. Yeah. This is to what they quote unquote pastor say. Mm -hmm. Instead of doing this, and what it what it's do? Mess their head. Completely up. Did you hear that? Yeah, I, you know, I know you said Pharaoh wanted to kill him. What? But uh, my question is, is this the same Pharaoh that, uh, <laughs> you know, because you call it the uh, <clears throat> rulers in Egypt was called Pharaoh, even they had different Pharaohs. Right. So uh, I wonder if, if this was the one that was his grandfather. I'm, I wanted that too, I can't tell you for sure. When you look at that, you got to say it possibility it had to be because this Pharaoh here, right here, it did, it doesn't show any change. No, it does later on, but not here. Right, that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it it doesn't show any change. It could have been. It could have been, but we don't know. I, I, I say things like that. Most likely, it probably was the same Pharaoh. <laughs> Most likely. Do I know for sure? No, what he said. You know what he said there. Right. And it says when Pharaoh heard it. Right. That's what I. That's why I went there. Right. Yeah. Because he said when Pharaoh heard of this matter. Yeah. It didn't say which one. He saw. He saw. He saw. He saw. Yeah. That's why. Ain't gonna be no more than fifty years later. Well, <clears throat> you know, but the, the thing uh, is, the thing is when uh, when uh, Moses became Pharaoh's daughter, he was a child then. Right. But at this point, he's grown. He's a grown man now. Oh, That's the so reason I say, is it the same? So I mean, I asked the question. I don't know either. I just asked the question. Right. Is, oh, is wow. it? Because, like you said, Pharaoh is a title. Right. It's yeah. not necessarily yeah. a man. Yeah. Uh, you know, man's name. Pharaoh's like being called king. Yeah. Okay. King. Okay. Right. Because, like in the Bible, you'll run into several Herods. Yeah. They're not all the same here. You know, we, we talk about the New Testament. That kind of thing. I'm not good enough to tell you. That, I, I'm not good enough to tell you. So. Well, um, I know later on, it's going to be a different Pharaoh. Yes. It's time to come back. Right. Oh, yeah. Because he told them mm -hmm. that they had, the people who thought they did it, kill him, they had died. Right. And remember, yeah. at this point, and at that point, I mean, he'll be eight years old. Mm -hmm. There could be two or three Pharaohs. Mm -hmm. By then. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people can perish in eight years mm -hmm. and, and, and come to the throne. That's what I'm not good enough to tell you. Not good enough to tell you on that. I wish I could, but I had the same thought. Get up there. We can ask that question. <laughs> I always ask that. I always say that same thing. I was like, it's a lot of things I want to ask the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I said that too. How do you do this? And I've been throwing rocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, you got all this going down the uh, uh, <laughs> road. Uh, 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 I, that's the main one I'm going to talk to. Oh. You got all that broke down. This is my head. <laughs> I, I, I want to talk to Moses and I want to talk to Paul. Say it. I, didn't want I want to say talk it. to Paul too. How did Paul take all that stuff? That's right. 
That that man, well, he told us I can do all things through Christ. That's true. He, he told us. us. Yeah, you know, that kind of thing. But I'm thinking from a human standpoint, Paul, what how? Yeah. It's going to be so wonderful. Who's this how? how? Mm -hmm. I don't do my staff at somebody. You know, stop it. You but, know, all that crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we get there, it's going to be so much to see. We ain't going to have time to ask no questions. You might not even want to worry about it. <laughs> 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 Let's finish up real quick, just because we need some time now. All right. So here's what happened then. We just sum it up. Moses had to flee to the land of Midian, right? Mm -hmm. To get out of reach of Pharaoh, who wanted to kill him. So he's outside the borders of Egypt now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's ran to safety, right? Well, again, Moses, uh, Pharaoh wanted to kill Moses because he's still an Egyptian, right? Now, in the process of the time, God lets Moses build a family mm -hmm. and uh, his own life in Midian. Yes. Right. So he had moved on from Egypt. And again, like you said, we get established in scripture, he moved on for 40 years mm -hmm. wow. at this time. So he was, Egypt was well behind him mm -hmm. in me. And most likely he wasn't thinking ever about going back mm -hmm. to That's Egypt. He had a good life <laughs> in me. He had a wife. He had a son. Uh, he, him and his father-in-law got along real good. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was like, it was really no reason to go back to Egypt right. mm -hmm. for him from a uh, human standpoint. But again, what does that teach you? Your plan ain't always God's plan. We got to do me and my wife talk about it all the time. I never heard of Anderson, Alabama. I never heard of gas in Alabama. How I get here? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, I was thought I was gonna move to something like Miami or and actually my, my first choice was Memphis. Because I had family in Memphis and I fell in love when I used to go and stay with my great aunt in Memphis. I said, that's where I'm gonna be. So I had a whole different Situation, I wasn't even in the right state. You know what I mean? I was going to Tennessee or, or Florida. God put me in Alabama, and I don't regret it. You know, one bit. You know, I mean, you think about my wife. She came to Mount Clemens, Michigan, just just to visit. She came back with her husband. She didn't know. She didn't know that she was going to do all that. Just came to visit. Remember, I told you, tall Dr. Hess. No, she got a better deal. Amen. Tall Dr. Hess. God changed that one. <laughs> I'm, glad I, I'm, glad I'm glad I got tough skin. Don't give me a break. But, anyway. <laughs> but let's just finish it up, y'all. God's not going to keep you here all day. All right. So the price of time, God bless most of your life family living, right? And only, but only he didn't seem like he wanted to leave, but God wanted to be, what, temporary. Mm -hmm. He weren't going to stay there, right? right? And it had to be God's providence because God must have brought, brought the timeline to be. Right? Because when he was still in Egypt, he could have tried to do the same thing. But it wasn't time for it, right? God really had his clock set 40 years later. Okay? And that's the way that things fell out. Even all the things that Moses did fell out to what? Make come back full circle. Where he had to go back to Egypt, right? Yeah. Think about think about Jonah. Same thing. God was going to have Jonah preach to Nineveh. Jonah's running. Jonah's going to end up in the belly of a big fish. But where did he end up? Nineveh. Right? Because why? The plan of God cannot be stopped. And it's going to happen when he wants it to happen. And it's the same thing with what? Egypt. Right now, deliver the, the children of Israel from it. Right? That makes sense to you? Hey, 23. Yes. Could you read 23 for Brother Mitch? <laughs> And I want to ask them. Well, I may not know the answer. Yeah, it's kind of the key That's what I said later on it's going to come. Yeah. That that process to so most likely, it's, that's what I said, most likely it's got to be the same guy. It has to. When you get there, it don't even ask me. Brother Mitchell just opens up with that question, and it kind of beat your head, but it says in the process of time. Now, what time God talking about, we have we don't know. Right. But he, he's not going. He could be going back to the time that that uh, Moses left. But it doesn't say what time, you know. But he said in the process of time. So in the process of time, time is a big, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of years. We got one framework around it, though. Right. Uh -huh. It doesn't tell us the framework. It doesn't tell us right. the time exactly in years. It tells right. us the time and location. Okay. He died while Moses was in Midian. And that's about, you know, so that's how long he was in the media. Well, but which one died? We don't know. He said the process died. Uh -huh. Well, most likely it's the same Pharaoh. Yeah. Because why I said, look, look at the article. Uh -huh. 
Look at the article. And it came to pass in the, in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Yeah, the king. Yeah. Not a king. The, that's one. Right, but if we have the, it means somebody very specific. Mm -hmm. So okay. most likely it was the same pharaoh okay. that he ran from. Okay. That's what I said, but I'm still saying most likely. Right? You know what? You, you, you keep writing the stuff that the, has to oh. The. <laughs> Because if he had went back in the same king with that, it could have been a lot of problems. Yeah, like problems could have been between me and you, and I'll leave it coming, and we didn't straighten it out. It's going to come back out, man. Yeah. So what God did, I'm going to take him out of the way that you're going back down there, Moses. Yes. I don't know, man. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because I know Moses was yes, afraid to go man. back. <laughs> and in mind, I ain't said he would. I don't know. <laughs> okay. If it had been me, I would have been thankful. Let me, let, me, let me say something really, uh, really. Yeah. Oh, I leave. Let me lay something really, really heavy on your on your heart. Yeah. Have you ever seen that you've had a, a tremendous enemy in your life? Anybody yeah. had a real bad? Like they call them nemesis yeah. in your life yeah. that you can't go forward for some reason, mm -hmm. and you can't go forward to that person who leaves the earth. That's what I'm saying. Have you ever seen that happen? I have. I've seen it. I've been through that. I've been through that. You know, it, it's in. <laughs> I probably talk way too much. Well, but anybody, anyway, the two people I'm talking about are dead. Yeah. It's dead. But anyway, I, 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 I was really struggling with my man. I always, again, I'm telling you stuff that ain't in Henry Street. So I want about all the broadcast. Oh, Henry Street was awful. No, I ain't talking about Henry Street. No. But I, I had a brother that just opposed me on any and everything. It didn't matter what it was. The sky was blue. No, it ain't perfect. Yeah, them kind of guys, yeah. right? Yeah. No matter no matter how good I was to him and stuff like that, no matter how loving I was to him, he had a thing against preachers. No matter who it was, and so I was public enemy number one the moment I walked in the door, and he didn't even know me, and, and it was a thorn in my side, my whole ministry before coming here, and he died. He died, and I talked to a senior minister about this. I said, man, you know, because every minister got somebody like that. It is. Everybody got one. And he's like, you need to be encouraged now. Because God doesn't take care of that. You will. Now you just keep going forward. Sometimes he will move some obstacles. Yes, they will. In order for what? You to go, go forward. Because go forward. if you think about it now, if, and this is just speculation, I say that up front. But I want you to ever think that my mind thinking about something is vital. What could have happened? Most would have went back there earlier. They'd have ambushed him. And they'd have been waiting for him. And then the prop, the plan of God would not have gone forward. So God is like, I can see that. You know, this is speculation. Right. I can see that happening, so I'm not going to allow it to happen. I'm going to take this guy out so I can put Moses in position to do my work. Right. Because remember, he took a pharaoh out. What did he do? Drown him in the See, anything that got in the way of God's plan going forward, God eliminated it. <laughs> Including this Pharaoh and the one to come. Y'all don't get that. <laughs> That's got the providence and power of God. Hmm? You ever see that? Think about some things that you've been on your job for 20 something years. Mm -hmm. Has God yeah. taken some folk out of your way? Amen. You will not have been in your job 20 some years if that thorn in the side was not taken out by God. It was not a coincidence they got a job elsewhere. Yeah. Because God still wants you in that chair. Yeah. Because for me, if y'all get too too crazy, I'm gonna go and work somewhere else. <laughs> but God is like, no, I want you to stay here. I'll move that way and see. Some, but yeah, you got to realize no that's the providence of God. of God. And God opens those doors and closes those doors. Sometimes he makes you flee. Yeah. And sometimes he makes yeah. them flee. Exactly. But at the end of the day, it's still going to accomplish what he wanted in the end. Yeah. So you start to see the what? Providence of God. And it also applies to what he does to us yeah. as well. That makes sense to you? Oh, yes. uh, so again, he took out two pharaohs. Yeah, I never even thought about that until we really started challenging this. Mm -hmm. And yet, he took out two pharaohs. Mm -hmm. Both of them had an ear for Moses. Mm -hmm. Both of them. Well, nothing's going to stop God's plan. I mean, it's going to Ain't nothing going to stop. And think about what they came with. 
No. It doesn't say that any of the children of Israel had chariots and all that when they were in the wilderness. That was the tank of the power. Remember, chariots were speed. Right. And, was, and chariots, what they would put on there is archers. Mm -hmm. So they're shooting down just like a, a, a missile coming from, you know, a tank. So why do you think the children of Israel were so scared there? They didn't have the armament. They didn't have the expertise. They didn't have the organization. They were some tough fighting people, but they weren't ready for Egypt. They weren't ready. But their God was. Our God was, right? Think about it. You know, we don't know how many thousands of people there were with, with Pharaoh, but there were nothing compared to one God. One God. Yeah. That's how that's how powerful they were. And then they arguably Pharaoh in Egypt was the most powerful nation in the world at the time. You know, because if you look at our history, how does our history come down to us Americans? It comes first from Egypt, then it's passed to Greece, then it's passed to Rome, then it's passed down the centuries to what? The United States. Just look at your language. The United States, uh, the English that we speak is based on Greek. It's based on Latin. Why? Because we took everything that we had before and we innovated for us. Down the line, it's all passed down. So every empire that's been great has what? Fallen. It has fallen, but what? You keep taking something from that. All you gotta do is look at the South. Look at, look at what, what, you know, those old southern porches, what did they have on front of them? Where'd that come from? Greece and Rome. That's why it's called Greco-Roman architecture, because why? They were doing that in Greece and Rome Back in the Bible days. Okay? So we're always building off of other people's knowledge. And then we got the dirt to call them inferior. We still can't build those pyramids. Right. So how inferior were they? They weren't. Because why? God said he rose them up. So God gave them some special knowledge to do it. That we can't even do. Today, even in even in um, I think it was Iraq, they found an old pottery battery. A battery made out of pottery. So you can't, you don't always want to say the ancients were crazy. I mean, think about some of our grandmothers and great grandmothers how you just take herbs and didn't go no black doctor. Nobody. Outlive all of us. Here, living 90, 100 years old. They couldn't have been all inferior. They had to know something. You know, so we got to get off our high horse with some of those things. We don't know everything, guys. All right, let me make sure I got it all. This time is up, y'all. But I think it's been a good class for you so far. Yes. Yes. So again, we're stressing. God moves on his own time table, don't yes. in, in Egypt's time, I mean, in, in <coughs> Moses' time as well as our time, he still moves on his own time table, not ours. Because remember, when we got out of this, Moses thought that it was time. But God said, no, first you got to go to Midian and come back. Mm -hmm. And it was 40 years, as we'll see him keep doing the scripture, right? And so thus the deliverance of children Israel was coming. But only when God saw fit for it to occur, right? Because remember, there was a prophecy on um, Israel. Y'all remember the prophecy? What did he tell um, the children of Israel? What did he tell their forefathers? How long would they be in Egypt? 400 years. 400 years. The 400, that had to expire before what? God was going to send the deliverer. That tells you right here and there that when Moses was trying to unify the people and kill that guy, the 400 years had not expired yet. So God put a timetable on this, and it was what? His own timetable. See, we get, we get mad at God about healing, for instance. God may have set that a year from now. But why are you moving so slow? Because he said it on his own time frame. There's something he's trying to accomplish that we just have to what? Wait on it. The woman issue of blood, how long did she have it? Twelve years. Twelve years. Twelve years. So sometimes God make you wait so that what? You can see his glory. So sometimes at this instant, you don't give him enough credit. You know, a lot of times you don't give him credit until you struggle through it for a while. And sometimes the struggle is not for you, it's for the people watching you. Why? Look at what's happening here. What is God really trying to accomplish and show people around you? Yeah. That he is God. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, let me see, make sure we get it off. Now remember, uh, God is in charge of my blessings, right? James 117, uh, every good and perfect gift is coming down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. So our blessings don't come from us or our employer. 
It comes from what? God. It comes from God. At the end of the day, right? So we may not get what we want from God when we want it. But if it is God's will, it will happen for us. But again, on his what? Timetable. Not my timetable. Or anybody else's timetable. See, God may already got your request already. You've already probably rubber stamped it and said, okay. And put a date on it. You just can't see that date yet. You just got to trust me. All right, we'll stop here. But any other questions or comments now? And we're going to go to Brother Large's verse 23 on the next occasion, if the good Lord sees fit. All right. Any, any questions or comments? Anybody? Feel free. I want to say that even after Psalm 03, it still was being tormented, that slavery. Oh, yes. It had just been hit so bad for them 50 to 40 years or so. Yeah. And he was away. So God can make that decision on his time to go back. I hear that cry. Yeah. 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 It is. And it's going to get worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. uh, Moses tell him what's going to happen. He's going to get worse. Uh -huh. It seems like it might get worse, but what? The storm's still going to blow out sometimes. Mm -hmm. Right? Again, in what? God's time. God's time. Very good. Good, good observation. All right. Any others? All right. If not, can I call on one of the brothers to send for us for a second? That'd be a rallying call for everybody to come out. But you, did you get anything out of this tonight? Yes. All right. Well, thank God. Thank you for being, being here and being the, the good people that you are. God bless you. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Glory, hallelujah. I shall not be moved. I anchor in Jehovah. I shall not be moved just like a tree. That's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the conviction of who God is, what he can do for us, and what we need to do for him as we continue a study of God's word. So I'm sure that both, all of our classes tonight have been a good class because everybody late tonight. So that's a good thing. Amen. I'm not mad. When the youth go over, amen, that means they're in it, whatever they're doing. Uh -huh. So I'm glad for that. It could be any other thing in the Bible class, so let's be glad when that happens. So 
Uh, again, thank you tonight for coming on out. We had a wonderful class, and I believe it was a challenging class for all of us, especially me, because y'all kept throwing curveball after curveball. I don't know. You know, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. But I'm glad that we do, because we got to think critically about the Word of God, right? Because we have to apply it to our lives, right? So there's nothing wrong with asking a why or, or how does this apply, because we got to go ahead and live this thing, right? So I'm glad that you do that. I joke with you about it, you know, a lot, but it's very, very serious about that, that, you know, speak up, speak up, say your mind, and uh, you make me consider things I hadn't even considered, but thank God, because I grow from exactly, you know, being with you as well. Uh, so what as we normally do, we're going to go ahead and stop. I know the time has gotten by us here, and uh, we take any last prayer requests or any um, uh, announcements we may have at this time. Uh, Brother Lord, do you mind doing a closing prayer? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Do we have any announcements or any prayer requests before we move forward? I might not be here Sunday. I might be at Boulder Press. I'm not sure yet, but if I do, I will put it on the video. Okay. Yeah, we'll keep you doing that. Friends there, my sponsors invited me. Nah, no, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, that. That's where we go when we're out of town at last. When I can find somebody to drive me over there, then. <laughs> 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 well, today would have been day because I went to Atlanta today. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and come back. That's why I feel like I've been beat by something today. I'm tired. <laughs> and since, since we've been joking here today, I feel like my wife, when I get home, just go ahead and tuck me in the bed. I don't care about being a little boy tonight. That's all right. Tuck me in the bed. <laughs> nice and tight. Nice and tight. I'm ready to go to bed now. All right, go ahead, Cisco. Absolutely. What about this? Yeah, I want to say appreciate y'all and your prayers uh, for the safe travel. Man, one more time, I got to go on the trip this the weekend, but uh, that's how I keep me in your prayers. You got frequent five miles. You know, I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not paying for them. I'm just saying it's not sharing with me. I'll take it. Let me, let me make sure you, you caught up. You good? Okay. I just want to make sure you caught up. Hell. Okay. All right, go ahead, Sister Lyman. Um, I'm asking for prayer because my left foot, I have a lot of menopathies in it, and I'm going to have a problem like uh, walking on it. So I ask for prayer for that. Absolutely. Amen. Any others? I want to say a prayer for my uncle Julius and Aunt Fanny. Julius and Aunt Fanny. God is. I got you. I've been on here. That's all right. That's all right. I explained that to him. No problem. All right. Any anyone else? <laughs> If not, the only announcement again is just for me is this reminder. Uh, typically, we're going to have we would have first Sunday at a different congregation, but again, remember, uh, Sand Valley moved the first Sunday festivities to the second Sunday. So, again, to, uh, next Sunday is going to be a regular uh, uh, meeting here, and of course, we'll have both morning and evening service uh, as well. So, I know it's going to throw you off a little bit, but it's going to be a temporary change because of the holiday. Any others? Feel free. Okay. If not, let's move forward. Again, we know that the most important thing that we can do is obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Amen. That's the greatest and the decision that we all have to make. Because remember, uh, when it comes to the gospel, uh, no and no response are the same thing. That is, even if you're not telling God no, if you uh, are not responding, you're still telling him no, right? Because we know that we have to obey the gospel we say according to Romans chapter 10 verse number 16. Again, the gospel is the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the good news about it, and how it affects us. That is, that, that is the way to salvation for all who will believe and obey Jesus Christ. That's the good news, right? Because it has some good news, you've got to have some bad news, right? Bad news is what? You know what it is, Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, right? The bad news is that all have sinned. 
and falling short of the glory of God, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So the good news is what? That last part, the gift of God being Christ Jesus. We know the Bible testifies about him being the son of God. We know that John 3, verse 16, one of them among many. Uh, what does it say? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We know that once we believe, we've got to take on the lifestyle. That's what Jesus meant in Luke 13, verse 3 and verse number 5. He says, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Repent means what? Live the Christian life of righteousness and leave a sinful lifestyle alone. The fourth part of plan of salvation, what we must say, right? We must confess Jesus as a Lord, which means, what's the, what's the title of the Lord? Son of God. They're both interchangeable. They mean the exact same thing. That Jesus Christ is Son of God. It means our Lord and our Savior. We must say that with our mouth. As Paul said in Romans 10, verse 9, verse 10, that with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And Paul also told us through the Holy Spirit that what we must confess Jesus as Lord. We see that in Acts 8, 37, in action, so that we have an example. The Ethiopian eunuch said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of of God. And then we must go down in the water just like Jesus did himself and just like he commanded. Because he said in Mark 16, verse number 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And again, after we become a Christian, we are remaining. That's what Jesus means by being faithful, remaining his follower. You continue to do that by continuing belief and obedience to him, and heaven will be your home. He says this in one instance, in several instances, but in this instance, he said in Revelation 2, verse 10. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. If by chance we as a Christian has already uh, obeyed the gospel, but we have disobeyed something uh, in the meantime, in other words, we have sinned, uh, God has grace and mercy out there, but he also puts a responsibility on us. He says in Acts 8, verse 22, and 1 John 1, 7, verse 10, that we must repent, confess our fault to God, and ask to forgive us, and he will do exactly that. Do we have any other category tonight? One, anyone that wants to become a Christian by giving your confession and being baptized, this is your moment. We'll do that for you right now. Or want to be restored, we'll pray along with excuse me, we'll pray along with you that God will forgive you as well. Do we have any tonight? If not, let's go ahead and stand. And uh, our brother will lead us in the closing prayer. Perfect. I want to tell y'all, I'm sincere about the name.